Chapter 24 The Cruise of the Karakum So lest we forget we last Jim last we had Jim he was he was just passing out in his boat, right? Falling asleep, dreaming of the Admiral Benbow. It was broad day when I awoke, and I found myself tossing at the southwest end of Treasure Island. The sun was up, but was still hid from me behind the great bulk of the spyglass, the big hill, the spyglass, which on this side descended almost to the sea in formidable cliffs. Hall bowline head and mizzenmast hill were at my elbow. It's not it's not looking good, is it? The the hill bare and dark, the head bound with cliffs forty or fifty feet high, lots of numbers again, and fringed with great masses of fallen rock. I was scarce a quarter of a mile to seaward, and it was my first thought to paddle in and land. Pardon me, I just did a small burp then. That notion was soon given over. Among the fallen rocks the breakers spouted and bellowed. Loud reverberations, heavy sprays flying and falling, boom, succeeded one another from second to second. And I saw myself, if I ventured nearer, dashed to death upon the rough shore, it's more like it, or spending my strength in vain to scale the beetling crags. The beetling crags. Nor was that all. For crawling together on flat tables of rock or letting themselves drop into the sea with loud reports, I beheld huge... Slimy monsters! Oh! Thank you for following, Rich Wilson! Oh! Big slimy monsters? I did not see that coming, my friends. This, this is more... This is... This is gold. I beheld huge slimy monsters! Soft snails, as it were, of incredible bigness. Uh, uh, slugs then presumably massive slugs who foresaw this monstrous slugs I don't remember I don't remember this, this from when reading this as a child two or three of them oh, sorry I've just read ahead I've read ahead and I look like an idiot but we'll all enjoy it in slam ownership Soft snails, as it were. Big giant slugs! Of incredible bigness. Two or three score of them together, making the rocks to echo with their barkings. Giant slugs barking on the rocks! Oh, God! Uh. I have understood since... And if I could make an auto zoom happen here, I'd make it happen. I have understood since that they were sea lions. Okay, fine. That makes more sense. That makes a lot more sense. And entirely harmless. But the look of them. If you've never seen a sea lion before, if you're someone, an 18th century person, an 18th century working class lad who lives in a pub with his with his mum and a, an alcoholic pirate and you've never seen you've never even heard of a sea lion what must be going through your head well we know we know big giant sea slugs big barking giant sea slugs that's what he thinks he's seeing terrified oh my god coming up the rock burp, burp. ah ah Sea lions. They're just harmless sea lions. But as far as he's concerned, and therefore as far as we're concerned, seeing the story through the eyes of the narrator, these are giant, barking, flesh-eating sea slugs. Ah! 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 But the look of them, added to the difficulty of the shore and the high running of the surf, was more than enough to disgust me at that landing place. Oh, giant slug! Oh god, they're making a. No I'm gonna be sick. Horrible. <laughs> but I was, I was felt sick. I put in my coracle there. I felt willing to starve at sea rather than confront such perils. You would, you would. Let's not judge him. 
You, you, you cannot imagine what he must be thinking when he's seeing these sea lions. The most he's seen is like a sheep, basically. That's all he's seen. He's gone sheep, horse, cow, dog, sea lion. And he's seen, oh, he's seen a rattlesnake as well, let's not forget. I felt willing to starve a sea rather than confront, confront such perils. In the meantime, I had a better chance, as I suppose, before me. North of Hall Bowling Head, the land runs in a long way, leaving at a low tide a long stretch of yellow sand. Blah, blah, blah. To the north of that again, there comes another cape. Cape of the Woods, as it is marked upon the chart, buried in tall green pines, which descended to the margin of the sea. Just geography, geography. I remembered what Silver had said about the current that sets northward along the whole west coast of Treasure Island, and seeing from my position that I was already under its influence, I preferred to leave Hall Bowling Head behind me. Thank you, Hayley Sterling, for the follow. And reserved my strength for an attempt to land upon the kindlier looking Cape of the Woods. Still not learned how to turn off that Zombie. I've tried, I've tried. Collectively for maybe an hour to try and turn off that zombie. Can't do it. Um, <clears throat> anyway. Uh, he's he's going to try and get into Cape of the Woods. There was a great smooth swell upon the sea. Waves. The wind blowing steady and gentle from the south. There was no contrariety between that and the current. And the billows rose and fell unbroken. Boom. Boom. Had it been otherwise, I must long ago have perished. But as it was... It is surprising how easily and securely my little and light boat could ride. Often, as I still lay at the bottom and kept no more than an eye above the gunwale, I could see a big blue summit heaving close above me. Yet the coracle would but bounce a little, dance as if on springs, and subside on the other side into the trough as lightly as a bird. Kaploosh. I began after a little to grow very bold and sat up to try my skill at paddling. But even a small change in the disposition of the weight will produce violent changes in the behaviour of a coracle. And I had hardly moved before the boat, giving up at once her gentle dancing movement, ran straight down a slope of water so steep that it made me giddy, and struck her nose with a spout of spray deep into the side of the next wave. We could have done with some sound effects, couldn't we? We could have done some, some um, sound of the sea sound effects. Boosh! Sploosh. Bar! That's the sea lions. Sploosh. I was drenched and terrified and fell instantly back into my old position, whereupon the coracle seemed to find her head again and led me as softly as before among the billows. It was plain she was not to be interfered with. It's a very sturdy coracle. And at that rate, since I could in no way influence her course, what hope had I left of reaching land? See, this is very much like those Irish monks we discussed before. He's got no control over this ship. He's got absolutely no control over it. He's just... Tossed about hither and yon in this egg cup on the water, basically. I began to be horribly frightened, as if he wasn't already with them man-eating sea slugs waiting for him on land. But I kept my head for all that. First, moving with all care, I gradually bailed out the coracle with my sea cap. So he's oh, he's been wearing a hat. He's been wearing a hat this whole time. Not sure how I feel about that news. I'd imagined him hatless. He's been wearing a sea cap. What do we think a sea cap is? Either it is a captain's hat, um, like Captain Bird's Eye wears, or it is one of those little sailor hats that Donald Duck wears. And the um, the toucan that keeps getting washed up on Animal Crossing. Toucan? Seagull. He's more of a seagull than a toucan. What is his name, that seagull? And you'll be like, oh, just, uh, just getting some shells in. Getting some shells in. I'll go and, uh, go and sell them, the lads, for a couple of... Oh, here he is. And he's like that on the shore. If you've not played Animal Crossing, this doesn't make any sense. Have you played Animal Crossing? 
if you haven't played Animal Crossing, basically you're wandering around your island, free as a bird, at any given time, and then suddenly you're like, oh, bloody hell. And you look in the horizon, and there's just an unconscious seagull like that in the sand. And you're like, oh, and you go up to him, and you're like, excuse me, excuse me. And he's like that. Oh, you fucking, oh, fucking sick of it. And you can't wake him up. You've got to wake him up like five times. You've got to go over to him. Excuse me. Excuse, you've been drinking rum. Like that. Excuse me. Excuse me. And then finally he wakes up. And he's like, oh, God, sorry. Oh, Jesus. Oh, bloody hell. A kraken knocked me off my boat. And you're like, did it? Did it? Or have you just been, you've been at the, You've been at the con. You've been at Doctor Lives's cognac, and then you've got to go and find his bits of his of his phone to get him off. So someone's got to come and pick him up, and that's and then he's like, "Oh, thanks for that. Here's a reward. It'll be here in two days." You're like, "Oh, two days! It just took me three hours to find your flipping bits of your phone." I hate that lad. I hate him, and I can't even think of his name. And in answer to what you just said, Rhiannon, yeah, I like the little ghost guy as well. He's nice. And I mean, it's like what you said in terms of not having touched your Animal Crossing for a week. I haven't. I, I, I like. I go on mine for like once a day, and then I just leave it for like a fortnight at a time. When I first got it, and it was like, today we've got to wait for the trees to grow. The most boring time of it. Gulliver, thank you very much, Casey Rogers. Gulliver, that's the name of the little seagull. The little liberty taker seagull. Excuse me. Excuse me. As she might say like that. What's up with him? He's pissed up. Excuse me. Oh, you fucking... Oh, oh, yeah. Hang on. Can you find my phone? I've got peaches to plant here. Anyway, when I was doing all that, all the planting of the seeds and everything, I was on it all the time. But now it's like, there's a functioning shop and a clothes shop. And you can find dinosaurs in the ground. And the owl is now is putting art up. I'm not, I'm not touching it. I've gone nowhere near it. I've been on Fallout 4 this whole time. What are the rules? I don't know. I don't make the rules of video games. God, I wish I had, uh, I wish I had some work to do. I do have bits of work to do. Um, where were we before we went on our Gulliver rant? It's more interesting than what's going on on this coracle journey. Let's not beat about the bush. And then I went left and then I went right. Anyway, we've established that Jim's wearing a hat. What did we say? It was either Captain Bird's eyes hat or Gulliver's or Do Donald Duck's hat. Or a swimming cap. A swimming cap. Then getting me eye, once more above the gunwale, I set myself to study how it was that she managed to slip so quietly through the rollers. I found each wave, instead of the big, smooth, glossy mountain it looks from shore or from a vessel's deck, was for all the world like any range of hills on dry land. Full of peaks and smooth places and valleys. It does feel weird, a hat, doesn't it, Green Tea? That's all I'm thinking about now. I'm just being, he's like, well, of course a wave is very different. When you're on a way and you're like, he's wearing a hat when he's doing all this. He's got like a little hat on. Is it like a what kind, is it? Like, is it like a nightcap, like Psycho Willy Winkies? Is it like a pirate? And he's like, and then when you're on the waves, you he goes on like this for some time, and he's those lower parts of all the stairs are toppling summit to the wave. Well, now thought I to myself, it is plain I must lie where I am and not disturb the balance. But uh, it is plain also that I can put the paddle over to the side. He's wearing a hat while he's doing all this. It's what if I like? Is it like a, an admiral's hat? Is it like one of those hats that like? Uh, that Nelson's wearing on Nelson's column, is it? I said, from time to time in smooth places, give her a shove or two towards land. No sooner thought than done. There I lay on my elbows in the most trying attitude. And every now and again, or is it like, a, is it like um, some sort of woolen hat? Is it like a, a beanie hat that he's wearing? Or is it like, uh, is it, yeah, how's it staying on? How's he keeping the hat on? And now and again, give a weak stroke or two to turn her head to shore. It was very tiring and slow work, yet I did visibly gain ground. And as we drew near the Cape of the Woods, though I saw I must infallibly miss that point, is it like Captain Hook's hat? Is it like a big red hat that he's wearing? I had still made some hundred yards of easting. Easting? What the fuck's easting mean? 
I can't be wearing a hat. How did he keep it on during the battle? There was a battle. He was still wearing his hat during the battle. I had still, uh, I was indeed close in. I could see the cool green treetops swaying together in the breeze, and I felt sure I could make the next promontory without fail. It was high time, for I now began to be tortured with thirst. Thirsty? Oh, thirsty. I'm still thinking about your stupid bloody hat, Jim. How are you keeping the... Why don't you get some water in your hat? I mean, you can't see water. Why are you using your hat to collect water in the first place? Inexplicably a different hat in every chapter. It might well have been Hagen Hyphen. It might well have been this whole time, and we would never have known. He's kept it from us. All the time he was exploring and seeing the snakes, he was wearing a hat. All the time he was spying on the pirates, he was wearing a hat. All the time that he was talking to Captain Smollett, all the time he was spying on him over the ridge that he was wearing a hat. <laughs> anyway, he's thirsty. The glow of the sun from above, its thousandfold reflection from the waves, the sea water that fell and dried upon me, caking my very lips with salt, combined to make my throat burn and my brain ache. I always think this about... We've kind of mentioned this before on the stream, haven't we? Like... At one point, Dr. Livesey says that on board their ship, and this was no uncommon thing in the 18th century on sea voyages, um, they didn't have any water. They didn't have any water. So the only thing they've got going on to like um, lift their spirits is they've got rum. They've got rum on board, and the squire and the doctor have got cognac, as we found out, cognac and wine and stuff to lift their spirits. Can you imagine? You've got no water. You're on a ship in the middle. There's no, like, the only... Uh, like shelter from the sun is down below where all the bilge water is the sewage the rats are all the food stores it's nobody's had a wash for because you can't have a wash now you can have a wash on board a ship everyone stinks the ship stinks there's fever and pestilence and then you're like oh do you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna get absolutely blasted on grog which is rum cut with water basically and other stuff, grog, um, and then what you got to have the hangover the next day. Uh, oh, good suggestion from Riley Pulliver hat. Maybe one of those hand knitted hats that button under the chin. Yeah, because his little ears will be getting cold if he's only six. Um, imagine all that, and then you've got a hangover. It would be the worst. Just baking to death in the sun. You'd be like that. <sighs> Like, if I've got a hangover, I need, unless I basically immediately have a bacon sandwich, two paracetamol, about nine pints of water, three cups of tea, and then a long lie down, even though I'm already in bed, probably. These sailors... Uh, uh, just basically, they're going, grog, 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 uh, yo, ho, ho, and a bottle of rum, uh, passing out, uh, back onto deck, into the sunshot, seagulls, kya, going over the head, uh, uh, like that, oh, it'd be horrible, baking in the sunshine, in the tropic, just out, wind, harsh wind, wind burn, sunburn, all on a hangover, can you imagine, and they can still sing sh sea shanties on top of all that, Oh, God, oh, my belly is going round and round. Oh, my God, I'm going to be sick. Oh, they say, old man, your horse will die. I'm going to be sick. Oh, Jesus. And we say so, and we hope so. Oh, my God. What a great life. Anyway, that's what's happening to Jim right now, and he's thirsty. He's not hungover, but he is thirsty. The sea water that fell and dried upon me, caking my very lips with salt to make my throat burn and my brain ache. Oh, the sight of this tree so near at hand had almost made me sick with longing. Blah, gives a drink of water. Blah. Well, the current had soon carried me past the point, and, uh, and as the next reach of sea opened out, I beheld a sight that changed the nature of my thoughts. Right in front of me, not half a mile away, I beheld... The Hispaniola under sail. I made sure, of course, that I should be taken, but I was so distressed for want of water that I scarce knew whether to be glad or sorry at the thought. And long before I'd come to a conclusion, surprise had taken entire possession of my mind, and I could do nothing but stare and wonder. The Hispaniola was under her main sail and two jibs. So the, the sails are down and the ship's moving. Okay... And the beautiful white canvas shone in the sun like snow or silver. Or long John Silver. 
When I first sighted her, all her sails were drawing. She was laying a course about northwest, and I presume the men on board were going round the island on their way back to the anchorage. Presently, she began to fetch more and more to the westward. And that, and uh, so that I thought uh, they had sighted me and were going to give chase. At last, however, she fell right to the wind's eye. Oh, thanks for clearing that up and was taken dead aback and stood there a while, helpless with her sail, shivering. Clumsy fellows, said I. Sorry, I'll do that in Jim's voice. Clumsy fellows, said I. Six and sniffy six-year-old. They must still be drunk as owls. Drunk as owls? Of all the animals to pick for who was drunk, I wouldn't have gone with an owl. What, from the head turning round? Blathers? Blathers? I can't think of blathers having a skin full. It's too much of a nervous disposition. Mind you, owls do... Um, owls do eat their prey whole and then uh, digest most of the soft bits and then just compact the hard bits into pellets and then just sick them up which is pretty metal as far as I'm concerned. So if they're big lads on the booze, it's no surprise to me. Blathers. I bet Blathers, that's why he's always asleep in that museum, Blathers. He's sleeping it off from the night before. I brought you an insect. Oh, oh, blah, 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 blah. oh, thanks for that. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you have a wander around if you want. Blah, blah, blah. Why is there never anyone else in here? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you just have a look around. No, don't mind me. Blah, blah. Yeah, I'll put, your, I'll put your centipede in there. Go and have a look. All the best. Blah, blah, blah. I'm never doing that again. I'm never doing that again. Animal. And I thought how Captain Smollett would have set them skipping. He would, wouldn't he? Can you imagine being hung over and not doing your job properly and Captain Smollett coming round the corner? Oh, God. Oh, my God, I'm never going to get this. Say, Jesus, what the... He's going on out here. Cut the state to you, youth. Come here. Come here. All right, all right. Can wake up, youth. Can wake up. Go on, go on. Skip it. <laughs> out of the way. Meanwhile, the schooner gradually fell off and filled again upon another tack, sailed swiftly for a minute or so, and brought up once more dead in the wind's eye. Again and again, this was repeated. You're telling me, Jim. To and fro, up and down, north, south, east and west, the Hispaniola sailed by swoops and dashes, and at each repetition ended as she had begun with idly flapping canvas. It became plain to me that nobody was steering. Oh, so he's loosed the ship off, the sails have unfurled, and now it's just got going free. And if so, where were the men? Either they were dead drunk or had deserted her, I thought. And perhaps if I could get on board, I might return the vessel to her captain. So if nobody's piloting it, nobody's bothering with it, we can take it back. The current was bearing coracle and schooner southward at an equal rate. As for the latter sailing, it was so wild and intermittent, and she hung each time so long in irons, that she certainly gained nothing if she did not even lose. Oh. If only I dared to sit up and paddle, I made sure I could overhaul her. Yes, you're trying to catch up with the Hispaniola. Blah, 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 blah. The scheme had an air of adventure that inspired me. And the thought of the water breaker beside the fall companion doubled my growing courage. He wants a drink of water. He wants to get on board ship. We could have done that in two sentences rather than nine paragraphs. Up I got. Was welcomed almost instantly by another cloud of spray, but this time stuck to my purpose and set myself with all my strength and caution to paddle after the unsteered Hispaniola. Once I had shipped to sea so heavy that I had to stop and bail with my heart fluttering like a bird. <laughs> with his little hat out again. <laughs> Getting the water out. With my heart fluttering like a bird. But gradually I got into the way of the thing and guided my coracle among the waves with only now and then a blow upon her bow and a dash of foam in my face. Boosh. I was now gaining rapidly on the schooner. I could see the brass glisten on the tiller as it banged a boot, and still no soul appeared upon her decks. I could not choose but suppose she was deserted. If not, the men were lying drunk below where I might batten them down, perhaps, and do what I chose with the ship. Exactly, Lockdown Ginger. He can't park it even when he gets on board. He's got no bloody anchor, and that's his fault. 
Well, oh, I mean, he's pulled it out of the bag before, hasn't he, Jim? He's pulled it out of the bag before. For some time, she had been doing the worst thing possible for me, standing still. She headed nearly due south, yawing, and of course, all the time. Each time she fell off, her sails partly filled, and these brought her, in a moment, right to the wind again. I have said this is the worst thing possible for me, and for us, for helpless as she looked in this situation, with the canvas cracking like cannon, and the blocks trundling and banging on the deck, she still continued to run away from me, not only with the speed of the current, but by the whole amount of her leeway, which was naturally great. We've all been there, haven't we, when the leeway's great? But now, at last, I had my chance. The breeze fell for some seconds very low, and the current gradually turning her, the Hispaniola revolved slowly round her centre, and at last presented me her stern, with the cabin window still gaping open, a lamp over the table still burning on into the day. The mainsail hung drooped like a banner. She was stock still, but for the current. For the last time, for the last little while, I had even lost, but now, redoubling my efforts, I began once more to overhaul the chase. So he's nearly caught up with that ship now. I was not a hundred yards from her when the wind came again in a clap. She filled on the port tack and was off again, stooping and skimming like a swallow. That bloody ship. My first impulse was one of despair, but my second was towards joy. Round she came till she was broadside onto me, so he's, he can get onto the main bit of the ship. Round, uh, round still till she had covered a half, and then two thirds, and then three quarters of the distance that separated us. I could see the waves boiling white under her forefoot. Immensely tall she looked to me from my low station in the coracle. And then, of a sudden, I began to comprehend. I had scarce time to think, scarce time to act and save myself. I was on the summit of one swell when the schooner came stooping over the next. The bowsprit was over my head. I sprang to my feet and leapt. Stamping the coracle underwater, with one hand, pff, I caught the jib boom, while my foot was lodged between the stay and the brace. We all know what all of these words mean, don't we? <laughs> and as I still clung there, panting, a dull, a dull blow told me that the schooner had charged down upon and struck the coracle, and that I was left without retreat on the Hispaniola. End of chapter.